Sophia J, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new or you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and like the video. Today, we're going to be reading Circumference and All the King's Tens. Make sure to stay tuned to the end for a math challenge. The last time he saw the king, he seemed a bit gloomy, said Lady Diamander to her husband, Circumference, one evening. His birthday is soon. Let's give him a surprise party here at our castle to cheer him up. We can invite people from the entire countryside. That's a fine idea, answered Circumference. We'll plan a huge celebration for him. Lady D sent out invitations. Servants rushed about the castle, cleaning and cooking. Carpenters built long wooden tables while seamstresses sewed tents. The guests began arriving in groups. Each day, more kept coming. Lady D showed the guests where to stay. Rooms filled up quickly. The castle is already exploding with guests, and an even bigger group is arriving this e afternoon, she told Circumference one evening. King Arthur's party is tonight, and I'm not ready. What a royal mess! Circumference nodded. I'll gather everyone in the meadow to get them out of your way. Soon, a large crowd stood in the grassy field outside the castle walls. The king will arrive in a few hours, began Circumference. Let's practice a royal march of greeting when everyone stepped smartly towards the center of the meadow. Pandemonium broke out, knees marching high knocked into arms swinging wide. The knights of the round table crashed into each other, falling into metallic heaps. Lady Di appeared in the middle of this confusion. I need to know how many guests will be here for lunch, and then how many for dinner, she called to her husband over the clatter. Circumference waved his arms. Attention, he bellowed. We need to know how many of you are here. But everyone kept milling around. Counting the crowd seemed like an impossible job. Sir Kell stepped forward with the suggestion. Forming small circles of people might work, he said. Each group can count its members and call out how many. Lady Di can then add up the numbers. Let's try it, said Circumference shepherding guests into groups. 60, 61, 111, 58, 17, 46, cried out voices in the crowd. No good, said Lady Di, stopping them. My head's spinning, just trying to keep track of all those numbers. We can march by one straight line, said Sir Lionel Segment counting up from one as we pass. So the group formed a queue. They began moving forward past Lady Di. The line was so long, it disappeared over the hill. That's a lot of people for just one person to count. Too slow, noted Lady Di. The king's birthday would have come and gone before I finished figuring this out. And I'm ga getting rather hot standing here, complained Sir Tangent inside his armor. Others agreed. Let's set up some tents, said Circumference. We can get into the shade while we think of another way to count everyone. On the edge of a meadow, the castle workers erected a small tent. Immediately, knights, ladies, and villagers rushed inside. It bulged dangerously. That tent is just too tiny, huffed Sir Tangent as he walked out. It doesn't even hold 10 people. He threw up his hands in impatience. Maybe this party for the king was a bad idea, Lady Dice said to Circumference. Tempers are beginning to flare, and I still don't know how many meals to serve. We need a new idea, said Circumference. Then he paused and smiled. Or maybe we can use parts of everyone's ideas. I think I have a solution. He stepped into the middle of the meadow. Hmm, I wonder what Circumference's idea is. Attention everyone! Please gather into small groups, as Sir Kell suggested. 
spread those groups out into lines as their line all segments described. Each line should have 10 people, like the 10 fingers and their tangent hands. The crowd grouped themselves as circumference directed. The lady dies there to count, but there were still so many rows. If we put 10 rows together, they would equal 100, she said. That would make counting go even more quickly. The hot but patient guest moved into the larger formations. I'm counting nine groups of 100, said Lady Di. There are also eight rows of 10 and one row with only seven. That's 900 plus 80 plus seven. Now at least I know how many lunches we need. So Lady Di said that there's nine groups where there's 10 rows of 10 people. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's also this group where there's only 8 rows of 10 people, so 80. And then there's these 7 extra people here. Then, 25 more people arrive from the small town of Lower Numberton. Welcome, said Lady Di, smiling. Could you get together in rows of 10? And could 3 of you join that line of 7 to make another row of 10? Two new groups of 10 joined the other eight rows of 10 and made a new group of 100. One more row of 10 remained, with a lone farmer and his wife standing shyly just behind it. Oh my, now we're up to 1,012 guests, murmured Lady Di. Several more tents of different sizes were set up to provide shade for everyone. To the left of the tiny tent that fit nine people or fewer, the castle workers pitched a bigger tent. It could hold up to nine rows of ten, or ninety. Next to that tent, there was an even, even bigger one for as many as nine groups of one hundred. An enormous tent was next for crowds of up to nine thousand. We'll serve lunch in the largest tent, declared Lady D. As everyone was finished, the last luncheon bites. A cloud of dust appeared in the distance. More guests were coming. It was a huge group from the King City, Camelot. Greeting circumference, called the leader of the caravan. We're here for the party. The king and his nobles should arrive shortly. Well then, said circumference, rubbing his hands together briskly, let's find a place for all of you. It took a while, but the Camelot guests were finally organized. They had eight groups of 1,000, nine groups of 100, eight groups of 10, and seven singles. Lady Di sent a messenger back to the castle to add 8,987 to the 1,012 guests who were already there for the evening feast. We'll need to put up another huge tent for dinner, said Circumference. Yes, agreed Lady Di and we can really surprise the king if everyone stayed hidden until his arrival. After a tasty dinner, the cooks brought out an enormous birthday cake and other delicious sweets. The guests cheers as the king blew out the candles. Then, everyone heard the thunder of hoofbeats. Uh-oh, said circumference. Another group approaches. Their flag shows them to be from the city of Addingmore. How many more tents will we need? He wondered out loud. And how many more desserts will that be? Asked Lady Di. I hope we have enough cake. The concept of place value, or where numbers live, allows us to make any number using the digits zero to nine. A digit's place tells its value, or how much it is worth. In the story, 9,999 guests show up for King Arthur's party. The number tells us that there are nine groups of 1,000, nine groups of 100, nine groups of 10, and nine single guests. The guests fill the tents in a nightly number neighborhood. Next time you see a big number, try imagining that the digits live in a number neighborhood. Each digit's place, or tent, is 10 times bigger than the one to its right. So that means this nine here in the tens place 
will be nine times bigger than the nine in the ones place. Because this, because it's in the tens place, represents nine groups of ten, or ninety. While this only represents nine groups of ones, which is nine. Making the nine groups of ten ten times bigger than the nine groups of one. So, mathematicians, what did we learn today? Well, we learned that place value is the value of a digit in a number. We also learned that the place value to the left of a digit is ten times larger than the value to its left. And finally, we learned that Circumference and Lady Di had a brilliant plan to organize all the guests and count them. Don't forget to like, subscribe. And hit that notification bell. Goodbye, mathematicians.